research, curiosity, innovation, discovery. Just a few words that describe what happens routinely here at the University of Washington. The school stands proudly as one of the world's leading institutions of higher learning. It is now ranked as among the top 15 universities in the world. If you stop and think about that, for a, for a state of 5, 000, uh, 5 million people roughly, that is a remarkable achievement. Chemistry professor and former vice provost for research, Alvin Quirum, is editor of two books showcasing 150 years of UW achievements. He explains why the school is so highly respected. And the reason is because of its contributions to discovery over the years, which have had an impact worldwide on the lives of people in every walk of life. So this is referred to as an alpha amino acid. Those seeds of discovery and creativity were planted early on. The UW, which has grown to three campuses with a total student population of 48,000, emerged from rather simple beginnings. The truth is that the College of Arts and Sciences was the University of Washington. Um, you know, we were the founding college. And so when the university started up, there was just us. Over the years, the College of Arts and Sciences has grown dramatically and spun off many other colleges and disciplines. Resonating throughout all, though, is a culture of collaboration and the freedom to be curious. The school that was based on um, what we think of as curiosity-based research, um, you know, we weren't out to particularly commercialize a product or to, um, you know, cure people. Um, yet we ended up spinning off all these other colleges um, that are doing very interesting things. To understand how the college has evolved, it's necessary to look back in time. The year is 1861. The founding of what's known then as the Territorial University of Washington in downtown Seattle. In those early decades, the Frontier University struggles hampered by limited funding and little public support. Still, there is a commitment to seeking the best and brightest in terms of both students and faculty. The U is just a couple of decades old when it hires a pioneer scientist who will set the bar high. They hired their first naturalist, and it was Orson Bennett Johnson, but he's referred to in their papers as Bug Johnson, which he brought his bugs with him. Yes, Bug Johnson brings along his collection of some 20,000 biological specimens from Oregon. Soon he begins working with an amateur club that formed to collect and debate. They call themselves the Young Naturalist Society. They didn't know what they were doing, but they liked the idea and they collected things. They collected bugs and fish and animals. Julie Stein, executive director of the Burke Museum, says Johnson set rigorous new scientific standards for the young naturalists. And he taught them how to collect and how to record very carefully the place you get the material, the time, the date, and to use scholarly resources to identify what it was. And they were identifying things that hadn't been collected before. Johnson's discoveries help educate the outside world about the rich diversity of the Pacific Northwest. And his methods are often credited with establishing a legacy of excellence at the University of Washington. Today, Johnson Hall, named in his honor, guarantees that Bugs' contributions will not be forgotten. And his extensive collections, along with those of the Young Naturalist Society, eventually gave rise to the Washington State Museum today known as the Burke. If you walk through the museum, you will see many of the catalog numbers that say Young Naturalist on them. So they collected some of the most beautiful objects and especially the cultural objects. Today, the museum serves as an historical treasure trove for researchers at the University of Washington and all over the world. We have no idea what will be useful for the scientists of 150 years from now. It is rather exciting and energizing to think that we have the responsibility of collecting just the right things that will be important to the future. 
somehow the infant university spawned in backwater Seattle survives those early years. Then along come several events that stimulate growth. The Klondike Gold Rush of 1897 spikes the local population and jolts the state's economy. Then in 1909, outsiders experience the vast natural resources of the Pacific Northwest thanks to a World's Fair known as the Alaska Yukon Pacific Exposition. The AYP raises new buildings on the UW campus, which by now has moved to its current Seattle location. More big change comes years later, after World War II. That's when research at the university expands dramatically. The following decades are an exciting time. Within our lifetime, basically, more discoveries have been made than have been made in the entire human history. Um, and so that um, the, the store of human knowledge has just exploded in, in ways that uh, are almost incomprehensible. Discoveries at the University of Washington help catapult it to being a top recipient of federal research dollars. From the College of Arts and Sciences emerge many new schools and disciplines. Computer science and engineering, architecture, medicine, the environment, and more. The UW earns international notoriety for many notable achievements, including the work of Hans Demelt, who in 1989 receives a Nobel Prize for his work in atomic physics. Evolution can be progressive, but just as in the natural world, it can also be a double-edged sword. While it's essential the university hang on to its origins, which means offering core subjects such as languages and math, it still has to compete in a rapidly changing world where new fields of study are being created, such as digital communications. That's the kind of thing that we've been thinking a lot about the college, is trying to figure out how to be both timeless and timely. And finding that balance is further complicated by shrinking budgets in tight economic times. The struggle for funds can certainly challenge that underlying commitment to curiosity-based research. We don't want to change the kinds of research that our scientists or that our social scientists or that our humanists um, are carrying out. We want them to let their imaginations go unfettered. Behind these walls, brilliant people are devoting countless hours to real world problems. From disease prevention to solar cell design to scanning the universe just a few areas where the freedom to ask questions can translate into change for society. Human curiosity tends to take us to important places that ends up having amazing payoffs that you could never be aware of ahead of time. And the thing about this university is you benefit from it, whether you come here or not. And often you don't know. You know that you know, your life has been changed but you don't know who did it. You don't, you know, you can't trace it. Um, and that's okay, that's okay. But we feel really good about it. <laughs>